Mr Baldock, welcome to the program. Thank you, Anne. It's nice to be here. Tell us about the Kiwi Party. What does that stand for? Well, one of the things that brought the Kiwi Party into existence was the whole anti-smacking legislation, as you know. Uh, we resigned from United Future because Peter Dunn had voted for it, and we felt that was pretty anti-family. And not only anti-family, but anti-democracy. And so um, my wife and I have organised the petition that's collected the signatures to force a referendum. So we're concerned about family issues, we're concerned about the loss of democracy, the fact that parliamentarians can ignore 80 per cent of the population and think they can get away with it. But we're concerned about many issues, social justice, you know, the increasing corruption in the country, the fact that we can't seem to trust government departments to be doing their job anymore. The country really needs a lot of change. You've been a missionary and, and a councillor for Tauranga City Council. What attracted you to politics? Well, I guess I like to change things. And uh, we went to the Philippines in 1981. We spent 15 years there. I ended up being the national director for the work for Youth of the Mission. And we made lots of changes and we tried to help people. And then during those years, coming home every couple of years, I began to see that New Zealand was really becoming a mission field. The, we were turning away from our Judeo-Christian value foundations and families were in trouble. And um, politics really interested me. I, I thought, you know, we can work at the coalface doing what we can, but we do need people to be there in government trying to make sure that the laws we pass are good laws and that they respect the foundations of our society. Was that hard, breaking into politics? Yeah. <laughs> when I first came home and told my friends what I thought you know, I was going to be doing, many of them thought I was crazy. And I thought I was crazy some days. It, it, it's a big transition to come back from overseas, uh, particularly after 15 years. But in 1999, I um, hooked up with uh, Future New Zealand and ended up being the candidate there. And I've taken to it a bit like a duck to water, many people say. I, I enjoy politics and I've enjoyed being an MP for three years. Um, I don't think the job's that difficult. Uh, and I don't think really politicians have to get corrupt and you know, lose their values. I think it's a job, like any job, uh, and, I, and I think it, it can be done better than it is right now. So I hope to make a difference. I think one of my passions is that you know, maybe somewhere in this country somebody might trust politicians a little more because of the way I conduct myself. I hope that's the case anyway. What do you see as some of the key issues facing New Zealanders in this election? Well, I think the, the concern about the loss of democracy is a very big issue. When we were collecting the signatures, you know, 390,000 people, my wife and I collected about 25,000 of those, and many who signed, even if they said, well, I don't actually smack my children, but it's a really a worry to me that the government can do something or the politicians can do something against our will. And I think that goes deep. I, I think it's been happening in the last nine years, perhaps even back since the 80s, where people have felt the government's just doing their thing and not listening to people. So I think that's an important issue. I, I think the economy, of course, is going to be important. Uh, people are finding it very tough. It's, you know, a lot of businesses going to the wall, people's investments disappearing. So I think that's going to be an issue. And they want security, really. And, and that goes down to, to the loss of values, often not only in our politicians, but in the government bureaucrats that have been appointed. The number of investigations that are going on into government departments. Our courts are not delivering the kind of justice people expect. Uh, and we've been particularly involved with uh, Immigration New Zealand and representing a lot of the migrants that have come to New Zealand to make a new home for themselves. And the way they're being treated is, is really terrible. It's a sh you're ashamed to be a Kiwi, really. What reassurances can you personally give people that things are going to change? Well, if we hold the balance of power after this election, we'll have a team, what we call it Team Kiwi. We've got some great people who are committed to the values that we talk about and we're committed to keeping each other accountable as well so that we don't get down there like many MPs do, go down with good intentions and then find the big party sort of swallows you up and spits you out really. You, you're, there's a saying in Parliament that you, know, you, you have to swallow a rat every now and again and do something you really don't feel right about doing. We're not going to pursue that kind of politics. And I think we can make a difference. The team of us that went to Parliament in 2002 I think we did make some very positive changes, but unfortunately we didn't hold the balance of power and, and our leader didn't share our same values. So, so there was some difficulties, but, but we saw the possibility. And what excites me really is the possibility that's there. If we can succeed in this election, I believe the Kiwi Party can have an influence on government for 20 years. In fact, we can grow to become the government one day. I think uh, everywhere in this country we have meetings 
the people who come in and hear what we have to say, they usually sign up and become involved because they like the message we have. So, so we're pretty keen to, to get down there and start working for New Zealanders. What specific things could you do to help people who are suffering economically with the price of food, for instance, uh, cost of living? Well, we'll be announcing some policies at our national conference in August here in Auckland, uh, which will really address that issue. We've already spoken about tax policies. We believe we need to raise the minimum wage and we need to offset that with a tax cut for employers so it's not a cost to the employer. You know, taxes in this country have to come down, but we, we hope they'll come down in ways that really benefit people the most. How have you personally been able to gauge the mood of New Zealanders right now prior to this election? Well, my wife and I have travelled around the country probably five times in the last year. We've been on the road. You know, we've, we've done probably 80, 100,000 kilometres. And we've been on the street collecting signatures. So when people sign, we've also listened to them about their other concerns. And so I think we have a fairly good gauge on on what people are concerned about, what they want to see happen. And uh, we're going to produce policies and a, a package with the Kiwi Party of good leadership that, that really can meet those needs. You've got a very supportive wife. I think you've been described as joined at the hip, an almost Obama style of electioneering, perhaps. Yeah, we both came home with a real uh, call to New Zealand and a desire to make changes. And, and we work together really well. We, we're fortunate our children have grown up. Our youngest is 25 and uh, he's overseas serving in uh, Youth for the Mission as well and our two daughters are married with grandchildren along the way. So we're free to, to work together and to travel together. I, I count it a real blessing that Barbara can travel with me, uh, not quite so many lonely nights away and, and she's just such a strength. Her gifts complement mine and some people suggest she should stand as well but, <laughs> but that might be a bit too much to have two of us going on it but, uh, but we do work well together. What are your strengths, your personal strengths? Well, I think I see what needs to change pretty quickly. Uh, I've been a good builder of organisations over the years. Uh, I work well with people. I, I think that um, you know, I get on well with people and I can work with people I don't necessarily agree with. I think when I was an MP and when I was a councillor, uh, one of the things that you need to do is work with people who perhaps you wouldn't normally spend time with. You've got to be accommodating. You've got to learn to give a little and take a little here. Uh, so I think that fits me well to go down to Parliament because one of the emotionally draining things I suppose about Parliament is one day these people are your friends and allies and tomorrow they're your enemies because the legislation changes. You know, Today you're fighting with these people, tomorrow it's someone else. And so you've got to be able to adapt and keep your mind focused on what you're trying to achieve uh, as well as you know, the, the importance to maintain good relationships with people. A lonely life for a politician? Well, again, with ha having Barbara travel with me, it's not so bad, but um, we want to change the country. We believe we can. I've been hugely inspired by William Wilberforce's movie, and you know, it came at the right time when we were really launching the, or halfway through the petition. And if he could keep going for 46 years, you know, then what have I got to complain about? I've been into it for nine years. I've actually had the privilege of succeeding and being in Parliament once. So I think we'll get back in there and um, I hope we can make a difference. And coalition partners? Well, we've made it clear that we won't support Labor after this election. We believe the mood in the nation is for a change of government. I, I, there are some things that Labor have done which, which we worked with in that three years I was there, which I think are very good, uh, particularly the roads. I think we've made a lot of progress in that. But I think the government's become arrogant and I think they've, um, they've missed the pulse of the people. They've passed too many laws that are unpopular. And it's time for a change. And so we will only support a national government, but we'll require them to agree to some things. We, we definitely want the referendum respected. John Key has been saying, you know, people should have their voice heard, but he's not prepared to say he'll obey that voice. So we, we want to make sure that happens. So we didn't work hard for 15 months to get a referendum together, then find that they just go and ignore it. We've got to change that anti-smacking law. It, it's a diabolical piece of legislation. We see it already affecting families. We see it making parents unsure of their authority. We find children growing with disrespect. So uh, if we leave it there, it will just really damage our society a lot more. Mr. Baldock, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure.